Tomb Raider is a game about raiding tombs. If you clean the house, you should use a vacuum. Tomb Raider is a game that continues the chronicles of Tony Stocks as she dick flips and board slides into the depths of hell. Her adventure begins after being shipwrecked onto a mysterious island and must locate her friends while also learning to survive on her own. Now, even though young Trony has never killed anyone before, she takes to it pretty quick and lucky for her, there's plenty of bad dudes to murder Sue while she explores the wilderness. So because this Tomb Raider is a reboot of the series, it takes a lot of pages out of the Uncharted handbook. But I guess that's only fair because Uncharted took a lot from the original Tomb Blader, so... It's the circle of life, I guess. Along with plenty of third-person shooting and easy-ass platforming, this game also has some really cool-ass tombs to explore. The tombs are usually pretty sweet-looking and offer some neat puzzles to solve, too. You know, I love them puzzles. These moments were definitely the highlights of the game for me, and they're what make this game different from Unfarted Poo or Unfarted Pee. Also, I'm 12 years old. Alien Isolation, aka Spooky Simulator 20XX, is a game set 15 years after the events of the original Alien film. You play as Amanda Ripley, daughter of Sigourney Weaver, the original hunky babe. You go to explore the space station and, spoilers, things get spooktracular. There's an alien on this bitch and it wants your bod. Now, this survival horror game has plenty of scripted encounters with the alien, but most of your personal visits are random and dynamic. The developers of this game spent so much time on this thing's AI that most of your encounters are totally unique, and you never know for sure what this dang thing is gonna do. That element of terror, combined with the first-person perspective and 70s lo-fi style interface, make this game immersive as hell. This game does get a little repetitive though, and the length probably could have got cut down to make for a more dense and effective campaign. The biggest thing I took away from this game is just how good the developers captured the vibe of the original film, and even though it's not a perfect game, there's something really special here, and you could tell the developers really wanted to do right by Ridley Scott's masterpiece of atmosphere and suspense. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, this game is pretty ninja. So going back to Tomb Data real quick, you know how this game tries to be kind of dark and stressful sometimes? Like, oh look, she's all tied up, what's gonna happen? Ooh, you could fall while you hold forward on the thumbstick and wait for a button prompt. That's pretty intense, huh? Weren't you scared? No, I'm not scared, because all that shit is just glorified cutscenes. You barely have any control over any of that shit, but yet the game constantly acts like you're on the edge of your seat because Lara Croft could die. Yeah, maybe if you don't know how to fucking press X. These moments never establish any real fear because you know that they're supposed to happen. They don't feel natural to the gameplay at all because they're a cheap route to take to have some quote unquote epic gaming moments. Sorry, I, I kind of went super off course with that shit. I drank a lot of coffee today, I think I'm just all jacked off. When I realized that these two games could make an interesting ass baby, that realization came in two parts. One, Tomb Raider could turn into Spooky Raider. B, the child of these games would basically be pred- predator to catch a predator. You play as Chris Hansen. So to paint the scene here, this bang baby could start almost the exact same way Tomb Raider already does. But instead of just being separated from your friends, something aboard the ship killed everyone on it, except you, and then crashed the Titanic. You'd proceed how you usually do in Tomb Raider, surviving in the wilderness, encountering bad dudes, exploring tombs, except now, something is always following you. So this game would still have all the bad guys and animals from Tomb Skater, but now, you're not the only one killing these things. Imagine approaching an enemy camp, getting ready to fire your bow, when all of a sudden, some type of fucking alien slaughters everyone and picks up your scent and now it's after you. Holy shit, that would be intense. And if this game was in a first person perspective as well, not only would these moments be more spooky, but exploring tombs with a torch, possibly in VR, could be super immersive. In isolation, you have this tool to monitor where the alien is and prepare yourself to either try and run away or hide until it passes by. If Alien Raider had something similar, you know, maybe something that beeped when the monster got closer to you, whatever you're doing would get a whole lot more intense. If you were in the middle of a firefight and the alien randomly found its way to that location, your objective would immediately change from kill all these bad guys to I gotta get the fuck out of here. This game could retain all of the easy platforming from Tomb Raider, but if it dropped the cinematic bullshit and instead added the dynamic possibility of having to run away or hide from a terrifying alien, you wouldn't need set pieces or quick time events. Just playing the game would be intense enough on its own. The feeling of isolation, pun intended, and fear that 
that Tomb Raider tries to convey would actually be a very real thing in this game. And if the survival upgrades and crafting from Tomb Skater were deeper and played a bigger role, maybe you could set up traps for the alien if you needed some temporary alone time to finish a tomb uninterrupted or just so you wouldn't have to worry about the fucking thing for a little while. But you know that thing's gonna break free eventually and it's gonna come for you. I know this game sounds super ambitious, the alien AI would have to be really advanced to traverse an entire map, but I'm in love with this concept, hot huh, boys. But what do you think? Should both games keep it in their respective pants? Do you think Tomb Raider is perfect as is? Let me know in the comments, you scrater boys, and also I just wanted to let all of you Reddit users know, which is like most of you, that there's a uh, Nakey Jakey subreddit now, if you're, into, uh, if you're into that sort of shit. It's crazy that people took the time to put that together, and I just wanted to say real quick that I, I love the little hot boy community we have here, and all of your comments are fucking hilarious. Anyways, stay hot, and I'll, I'll raid your tombs next week. Tomb Raider is a game about raiding tombs. If you clean the house, you should use a vacuum. If you don't, then I'm gonna call you a baby. If you like Jacob, then you probably like Jakey. If you like this video, then give me a thumbs up. If you like toys, buy a town truck. If you like banging, then please subscribe. Weekly videos till the day I die. Uh. What games do you wanna see have sex? Leave a comment if you love rice checks. Or maybe you like them honey nut bitches. Tomb Raider isn't a game about witches. Uh.